Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. I'm Tim Laird with Kevin Harned, and you're in for a five-star show today. And all of that with secrets revealed from a five-diamond restaurant, the English Grill. The chef is here to tell us how Kentucky Proud products have gone upscale. You know, Kevin, retro cocktails are in like old fashions and Manhattans, and I've got the secrets to another classic, the champagne cocktail. And if you've seen Casablanca, they ordered that all through the show at Rick's Cafe. Hmm. We'll look forward to the secrets on that. And it's all a great show before a great studio audience. It's Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs, and it starts right now. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harden. You're in for a great show today like always. We're here at our home base in Butchertown and Bourbon Barrel Foods. And this time we're sharing secrets from one of the most famous restaurants in Kentucky. It's the English Grill inside Louisville's historic Brown Hotel, the home of the Hot Brown. The building dates back to the 1920s and its guest list includes a host of historical figures from Bing Crosby to Bob Hope and even Harry Truman. And still today, the English Grill is known as one of the top culinary destinations anywhere. And we're getting a taste of it today, as Chef Dustin Willett reveals the secrets to his Kentucky Fried Crab Cakes and these luxurious braised short ribs. All of that just ahead, but first, say hello to our CEO, America's Chief Entertaining Officer, my broadcast partner, Tim Lair. Hello, Kevin! Hello, Tim. Wow! What a great How day! How fun is this going to be? This is a lot of fun. This audience is fired up. They're going to have fun. They are going to have fun. Fun. We're gonna have fun. Well, and if it, if we don't, it's our own fault. That's right. That's exactly. the way the show works. Exactly. You can either have fun or not, and we always choose to have fun because we always have great chefs. We do, and I'll tell you what, this is a classic. I mean, the English Grill goes so back. There's so much history there at that hotel, Five Diamond Award Hotel. What a great place uh, to showcase uh, this wonderful chef that we have today. So I'm excited. I am too. And when you think of the hot brown. That's where it all started. That's where the hot brown started. Look forward to getting the story behind that and the secrets to, to today's recipes. A Kentucky Fied Crab Cake. How about that? I love it. You want to get can't started? Wait. Let's do Let's Kevin. Do it. All right. I'll tell you what, it's a great day to be in the kitchen studio. Here he is, the one and only, the great chef, Dustin Willett from the English Grill at the Brown Hotel. Now, how are you, man? Great to see you. Good to see you. Thank Good. you. How exciting. I mean, the Brown Hotel, English Grill. You get locals and you get people from all over the world come to visit you. Uh, I know a lot of people have to come in and they have to have the original hot brown, right? Correct. It started at the Brown Hotel, hence the name. Started there in uh, 1923. The original chef of the hotel, a man named uh, Fred Schmidt, invented it. Um, there used to be dance parties that went late into the night. And uh, in the early morning hours, people would start to order food, and it would usually be like ham and eggs and things like that. And uh, I guess the chef got tired of just making ham and eggs over and over again. <laughs> so and, that's uh, a so he had some turkey, they had some toast, uh, some Mornay sauce, put it together, and uh, well, that went over pretty well. And, uh, <laughs> and the rest is history. Yeah, well, I mean, history. when you run out of some stuff, that's what you have. You serve it, and it's a hit, then why, why quit serving it, right? And you go from there. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Become a so, staple. What are we going to do today, Chef? This sounds exciting. So we're taking a, a traditional crab cake, but you're actually going to turn it a little Kentucky proud, I heard. I'm kind of a crab cake purist. I don't want to, you know, a lot of people chop up peppers and put a bunch of things. Oh, but yeah. We're going with a uh, nice crab cake. It's a baked crab cake. Um, and we also have a savory tomato jam and a little shaved, uh, shaved vegetable accompaniment. Beautiful. All right. Show us how we get start. Uh, we'll start with the jam. So it's a real simple jam. Um, it's, uh, I've got some sherry vinegar a little uh, sugar, and then a uh, fresh tomato, just peeled and diced. Beautiful. Very, very important to peel it. If you don't peel it, you end up with little uh, scraps of the peel in your, uh, in your jam, and it's just not as appetizing. No, and that's a good secret, because it also it'll stick to your teeth. You know, you get that little right, peel on right. there. It's, it's, <laughs> it's hard to chew up, and you're, right. yeah, it's, it's So not, peel it's not the good. tomatoes. Tim There's a like secret anything reveal. that's going to slow his jam. No. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to start with my sherry vinegar. Beautiful. And uh, I'm going to add my sugar. And I want this to, to get bubbly. So you want all the sugar to dissolve? I want it, it to dissolve, and I want it to get a little uh, bubbly and, and caramely. And I'm just making up words now, but 
That's a chef Tim, term. Tim understood bubbly. And, uh, uh, yeah, bubbly. Uh, <laughs> break out the, the Corbell. The crab cakes are going to be crabbly. And the, um, while we wait for that to get going, we can start the crab cake. Sure. Let's do it. So start with my mayonnaise. Good portion. Pretty good bit. These are uh, these crab cakes are going to be a little uh, looser maybe than you than you would um, because it's it's being baked. It's not so I'm not worried about pan frying it or deep oh, frying it or anything absolutely. like that. Um, I've got one egg. This will actually kind of help bind it, keep it together a little bit too. Absolutely, eggs are uh, basically it's cook's glue, so that's what <laughs> the, that's what holds all the good stuff together. Here we go, and I've got a, a half like a, a little ham juice. and cook's glue today. <laughs> a <little> cook's glue. <laughs> it's a little old bay seasoning. Very traditional for a nice crab cake. Yes, sir. I've got a little bit of Dijon mustard, about a tablespoon. Looks easy so far. Right. And I'm just combining as I go some fresh chives. Now once I add the crab meat, I really don't want to break it up too much. I've got some nice jumbo lump crab. I like the size of that. I mean, that is beautiful. So I really, 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 I do not want to smash that all up. Right. I want to keep it beautiful. Yeah. I want to keep it whole. Giant. So. This is one pound of crab. Nice. So it's going to be more crab than cake. Right. Don't you hate when you get those crab right. cakes? It's like all yeah, all stuffing. cake and no yeah. crab. So at this point, I'm I'm now the the crabs in there have to be very very delicate with my mixture. See that you're just gently. I'm just folding. 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 That's right. Because I don't want to you know break up this crab. I paid for the really nice jumbo lump crab, and I don't want to turn it into shredded you know crab. shredded up <laughs> crab meat. Kevin was kind of crabby this morning. I don't know if you know that. It's kind of appropriate. We're, We're all going to be crabby dish. before this day is up. So now, just switching back to my jam, my vinegar and sugar mixtures, nice and bubbly. Bubbling away. And I'm going to add my fresh peeled tomato. And, peeled and diced tomato. Peeled and diced. That's kind of nice. It's going to be kind of a uh, savory, sweet kind of uh, texture with the vinegar and the sugar in there. And That's correct. And I guess like in season, and those fresh tomatoes, I can just imagine. Right. Unbelievable. And the, the crab is very rich, and this is going to give a little acidity to, to, oh, balance to, it. to balance it out. So go ahead and add my breadcrumbs. Just about a few tablespoons, really. I don't want to. And that's great. I mean, here's a couple of tablespoons of breadcrumbs to a pound of lump crab. And are these just regular breadcrumbs, panko, or? These are panko, but you can use regular as well. Okay. Um, what they, they're really just there to, uh, to add a little more binder. You know, the, egg, the egg's kind of a binder, and then the, the, the breadcrumb just gives it a little bit of stability. Kind of soaks up some of that uh, egg and the mayonnaise. And right. I'm going to put just a couple of uh, dashes of Tabasco. If you like your spicier, you can certainly add more. Now, one trick to this, if you can uh, put it in the refrigerator and just let it, uh, let it rest for about a half hour or so before you get ready to portion them, then, uh, then that allows your breadcrumb to kind of absorb some of the liquid oh, and yeah. you're going to have a, um, a better idea of the actual texture. Kind of a little bit more firm of a cake right. when you Right, a little uh, easier to work with. It. Now, you don't want it dry, but... No. Um, and then, you know, you can add less bread and, and then... When you pull it out of the fridge and it looks a little loose, you could always add a little, add a little more. bit more at a time. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna fill my mold. I'm gonna I'm gonna press it down. I'm not gonna smash it, but I'm gonna pack it in there a little bit. And you can get those molds at a, like a restaurant supply place, like Dine and Company. I think uh, absolutely. They've got those molds. Mm -hmm. Even some of your nicer uh, grocery stores or markets have uh, have pretty extensive you know, food supply sections in them now. Or you can go to a hardware store and get PVC pipe. That's right. <laughs> you, know, so you have to put it on your saw. Yeah. And, you, know, uh, you have to have a workshop. But. That's right. And I can pop this crab in the oven. 375 for 8 to 10 minutes, depending on your oven. Okay. 
because the crab is actually already cooked. That's right. Well, the good right. part is, by the magic of TV, yeah. Hot out of the oven, Kevin. Look Hot at that. Hot out of the oven, very realistic. Beautiful crab cake. Just my oh. crab cake. Wow. I've got one more trick up my sleeve. This is a little parsley puree, a little parsley coulis. Which is basically what? Parsley and olive oil, or? Yes. Nice color. Beautiful. Add a little color. I've got my shaved vegetables. I used uh, watermelon, radish, fennel, some scallions, and red peppers. So I don't want to overshadow the crab cake, so I'm just going to. I'm going to use just a little bit just to garnish. Beautiful. Nice. So I'll tell you what, cake. that looks great, Jeff. have it. Awesome. That looks absolutely delicious. If you're a seafood fan, you'll love that. But if not, we have something for those that like beef coming up. We do. What are we going to make? Well, we've got a beef short rib, um, braised, red wine braised, um, Frondosa Farms mushrooms. Mm. Right here, uh, locally grown in Simpsonville, Kentucky. It's all Kentucky proud. We're going to share the secrets to that. And Tim, you're headed back to the bar. I'll tell you what, I got a special cocktail. It's a classic. It's a champagne cocktail. Don't go away. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs continues right after this. <laughs> Nicely done, Chef. Oh, my God. That looks great. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs is a presentation of Kentucky Proud. Everybody, glad to be with you again on this episode of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. We have been cooking in the kitchen with Chef Dustin Willett from the English Grill at the Brown Hotel. He's just made these amazing crab cakes, and coming up, he's going to beef up the menu just a bit with some braised short ribs that you can make at home when you learn the secrets. But first, it's time to check in with my broadcast partner, Tim Laird. He's back at the Old Forester Bar. Tim? That's right, Kevin. I'll tell you what, all the new cocktail trends are new fashioned, old fashioned. Basically, the old fashions are back in style as well as Manhattan's. And I'm going to show you the secrets to a classic champagne cocktail. And if you've seen the movie Casablanca, you'll see that they ordered it continuously through the movie at Rick's Cafe. And I'm going to show you the secrets how it's done. Starts out with a classic coupe glass. This was the style of the glass back in the day with one sugar cube. To that, a couple of dashes of bitters, and then finally topped with a little bit of Corbel Brut California Champagne. Again, this is a classic that's back in style, and it is the Champagne Cocktail. Now that you know the secrets, you could make this at home too. Fantastic. Oh, that's good. Delicious. Cheers. Thanks, Tim. And don't go away. You don't want to miss the secrets to those Bray short ribs I mentioned. We've got that when we come back on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. If you like Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs on TV, you'll love to see it in person. Watch top chefs reveal their secrets and then taste everything they make. Being part of the show, you get to taste this too. Yeah. That's, uh, yay. Space is limited, so get your tickets now online at mintjuleptours.com. Hi, everybody, and welcome back to Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. As we promised you before we went to the commercial break, we would be revealing the secrets to that braised short rib. We are back here with Chef Dustin Willett from the Brown Hotel, and Tim Laird is here as well. We enjoyed the recipe for the cocktail, we've enjoyed the crab cake, and now it's time maybe something a little more hearty. Yeah, Kevin, I'll tell you what, I'm excited because we're going to beef things up. Uh, yeah, we are. What do we have, Chef? Got some boneless beef short rib. I'm going to start with a little bit of uh, canola oil. You could use uh, grapeseed would be another good choice, just something that can handle the high heat cooking. A little higher smoke point. Yeah. Correct. Olive oil will be smoking a little too fast. All right. That's a sizzle That's you want to hear. Good to know. That is it. what you want to hear when it hits the pan. And you don't want to overload your pan. So if you're doing a, a, a larger batch, just uh, you can sear it separately, a few pieces at a time. If you overload the pan, you end up with a bunch of water in there. You don't oh, get the okay. sear. You, you start, you get, you're boiling basically at that point. So I'm just, I'm checking the meat. I want to get a nice uh, golden brown 
Just like that, nice little sear. Nice sear, maybe a little more, but I don't want to scorch. If it's black and scorching, you're going to ruin the flavor of the meat. You get a nice sear, you're adding flavor, and you're you're uh, locking in that seasoning, um, locking in the juices. A little caramelization going on on that. And when you have that hot pan like that, that, that happens pretty quickly here. You don't have to. That's true, and, and all the uh, you know it depends on your stove. Um, this is a really nice stove, so it gets hot. Um, your your stove at home may take a little longer to sure. heat up, and um, but yeah, we're moving right along with this one. So once I've uh, once I've gotten a really good sear on my meat, I'm gonna uh, I'm actually gonna take it out and I'm gonna set it to the side for a minute, and I'm gonna add my uh, mirepoix vegetables. Oh, in the same pan with all that goodies. That, right there uh, with the juice, uh, the juice from the. Uh, the rib. The mirepoix, just a little carrot, onion, and celery. That's correct. Can you do that flip like that, Tim? <laughs> yeah, I can, but it'll be all over the uh, floor, <laughs> the stove. Give it a try. Yeah. One time. <laughs> do it for the audience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not bad. Not hey, bad. Not that's bad. good. Look at you. <laughs> So I'm going to let this caramelize a little bit in those, uh, in, right there in those juices. You can, uh, you can let them go a little longer than this. You don't want to get them, you know, definitely don't, don't really want to scorch or anything, but, right. uh, but a nice caramelization is good. It's going to add flavor to your, to your, uh, your cooking liquid. And that goes back? This goes back in. But I just love the aromatic of the uh, onion and carrots and celery together. It's just, I mean, it's delicious. And at this point, I have uh, my braising liquid. You always want your, uh, when you're braising, you want the liquid to be hot when you put it in. Um, cold liquid, generally it draws flavor out of the, the protein. A hot liquid tends to keep the flavor inside. Oh, interesting. So you wouldn't want to put cold in there and then have to have to bring it up. We're learning a lot more secrets, Kevin. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Oh. This is my kind so. of meal right here, Tim. Oh, I'm telling you, it is. You're right. I love it. So if you were doing a larger batch, you would transfer this to a roasting pan. If it's a smaller batch, you could do it right in the pan. So I'm going to add some aromatics to my braising liquid. Uh, some garlic cloves, some uh, thyme, and... Uh, fresh bay leaf. Um, but you want to go ahead and cover this. I okay. like to do a parchment paper and a loom and then a foil over that because I don't want foil touching the food. And I'm going to go in a uh, 325 degree oven for about two and a half to three hours. Wow. Okay. So it's going to really get nice and tender. So we're going to saute our mushrooms now oh, while our good. beef is braising. Those mushrooms are beautiful. Oh, they look great. And that's really come about in the last number of years too, oh, yeah. where we have so many local people providing those. You can start with a little oil. If it, if it, mushrooms tend to absorb, so if you need to add a little more once you, once you get them going, because that's going to help with the sear. You know, you could use the canola, or you could use like a canola olive oil blend. Oh, okay. You could finish with a little olive oil uh, when they when they're done, or, or even a little butter if you Toward wanted to. End. Correct. Well, that's going to take just a couple of minutes, and while those continue to cook, we will take a quick break. But when we come back, we're going to finish up the braised short rib right here on Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. See the best of Kentucky with premium transportation and customized adventures. Brought to you by Mint Julep Tours. Get inside access on the Kentucky Bourbon Trail. See historic Louisville. Get up close to thoroughbred champions in horse country and mix it up with a culinary tour. We have it all. Book your fun today at mintjuleptours.com. Remember, the purpose of fun is to have some. So come join us. Mint Julep Tours. Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. I'm Kevin Harnett alongside Tim Laird, and we are sitting here soaking up the secrets from Chef Dustin Willett at the Brown Hotel. When we went to commercial break, we're working on the mushrooms, and they're just about finished. We're just about like. done. A little salt and pepper on there you threw on there. We added the salt and pepper. Now we've got that nice sear, so we know the mushrooms components. are finished. Uh, you know, this is a parsnip puree we're going to pair it with. 
And I do like uh, parsnip uh, for a little change of pace from potatoes. Just uh, adds a little different flavor. It still has that wonderful texture. And butter, right? Did you say that, Chef? Yes, a little bit of butter. <laughs> the butter, uh, it adds some richness, and it also uh, helps smooth it out because you're almost emulsifying it in. So you get a nice smooth puree. Beautiful. We've got our rib fresh out of the oven. Mm. And again, done perfectly where it's not, uh, not falling apart. Right. It's just it's right. It's very tender. I mean, it's fork tender, but it's... Uh, oh, look at that. So I'm going to go over the top with the mushrooms. I don't want to cover up the, uh, the meat. I want the meat to show, but I want to showcase these mushrooms as well. So I can kind of do a, a little line. Oh, nice. A little line over the top. I have my sauce, which is my, um, I infused a little red wine into the braising liquid and I reduced it down and it gets a little, uh, you know, it thickens up a little bit, and it's just a mm. nice pan au jus. Beautiful. Oh. Put a little bit around. And uh, the dish is uh, pretty much complete. I'm going to garnish with some, um, just a little bit of pea shoots. These are also locally grown here at uh, Groganica Farms in Louisville, Kentucky. A Gives green. a little color, a little green. Um, Freshen it up just a little bit. And there it is. There it is. Wow, look at that. As served at the English Grill. How about that? Beautiful. Unbelievable. I'll tell you what, Chef. That looks incredible. I know you're just dying. Oh. You can't. <laughs> My Kevin is just right going there. right. What's for, a jump into that? For folks that may not know uh, about the Brown Hotel or where you're located, tell them how to find you. Um, you can go to brownhotel.com, make reservations there. Um, we're right downtown, Broadway and 4th. Thank you so much for joining Pleasure us today and sharing Thanks the secrets to these wonderful dishes. Absolutely. I'll tell you what. Dustin Willett, everybody. <laughs> Appreciate you being here. And Thanks Thank for having me. Great job, secrets. Chef. Thank you very much. On behalf of all of us at B&B Productions, we say thank you for being with us today as well. We'll see you next time on another great edition of Secrets of Bluegrass Chefs. Woo!